Right? Oh, I'm not hearing it. I don't want to start preaching. Can somebody say it louder? Whether you had a good night or manageable. Yeah, I've got a little data. And you know, some of us like data too much. So I'm gathering data to make some analysis. Um, Gossip, Boss, and uh, his team. Center for No Till, Darata. Mofa Rep, now uh, Climate Unit. GMET. Friends of the media, colleagues, farmers, ladies and gentlemen, the shoe that I'm wearing seems to be larger than my feet. And then, you know, these days, the Arimi house are so many. If I say anything in contrary to what is supposed to be said, I don't want to say my head rules. Don't take the regional director, the municipal director of West Gonja, uh, coordinating director, or the regional coordinating director, or the regional minister to task. Hold me responsible. And with these checks, I think I will go within the context. I will make sure that I will not go outside the context so that my head will go. Fellow participants, I wish to warmly welcome you to this very important workshop to Damango. The theme for the workshop, as indicated, is building champions in agribusiness, value chain for climate change resilience. As farmers, when I say as farmers, even the AEs, agri staff, we are even doing more than some of the farmers, right? Yes. Yes. My dad used to tell us that when you are feeding a child and you are licking your hands, by the time the child will be satisfied, even when the food is finished, you will drink water, right? <laughs> but when you eat the child's food, you can be sure there will be pneumonia in the house. So we are teaching the farmers what to do, and then we will also have to demonstrate what to do so that they will learn from us. You say learn by experience, right? Yes. I think we are all aware that the dangers we face as a result of the climate change, namely the annual variability in terms of rainfall, high temperatures, you can name them. This has even made it difficult for us, as farmers, to even know when the rains are starting or when the rains will be ending. Unlike those days when we were children, we were always happy when June is getting closer because that time the Nara will be ready. And those of us who went to the, the old system, when they are about vacating, you are ready to go home because you want to go and eat Nara. But these days, I can't predict when Nara will be ready. The farmers will always be asking us, when do we plant? When, is the rain, when are the rain stopping? We are all confused. We don't know. So, gathering here, This workshop will enlighten us, will open up our minds as what to do to ensure that we we'll mitigate the climate change effects. Crops continually stand vulnerable to the environment. The shocks sometimes, I think when you go out tomorrow or to the field, you will see it yourself. Where's going to we do early granite. I think, Doctor, the last time you came, you, you sympathized with some of the farmers. When you go around now, you see a lot of the granite wilted. 
Okay. It's not the farmer's fault. The farmer wants to uh, make some gains, so he will plant early. But now the granules on the field, the rains, are not coming the way they should come. So this is something that is a big challenge for all of us gathered here. I want all of us to open our ears, contribute meaningfully to the success of this program. I think research has also come up with potential crops that are short duration crops or they stand the test of time in terms of climate effects. You know them better than I do. If I start mentioning them and I give the wrong name, they will say, ah, is it the agriculture that doesn't even know the crops? And as a teacher, you always throw some of these questions to the class. So you know the best crops, you know the things that we need to do to help our farmers. Gossip has done a lot to contribute to climate mitigation measures through climate change awareness creation, climate smart agricultural technologies demonstration, agroforestry, among others. I think if uh, Gossip is standing by me, I can give a tap on their shoulder for the good work they have been doing. And I think you can testify to that. We have to keep the fire burning. Why? Gossip will come and go. Those of us who are, who are old in the system, we can count the number of projects that have come and gone. And some are yet to come, and they will still go. But MOFA and the Department of Agri will still be there. Farmers, whether you like or not, will still be there. So, we need to do what is right to sustain our lives. Last two Sundays, I traveled to the village. And when we were children, the time we hit is around this time when our parents will ask us to go into the crowd and carry all the car down to the farm. Here, yeah, I don't see it. When I just got to Bulga, I think I'll go down, left and right, I say what, and now come home. And I've been telling people here that ourselves in Upper East are not the loose type of soils. If you continue to cut the trees here, and it, it will come like what is happening in Upper East. And even wind erosion will cut all the soil away, not even water. So, staff of West Gonja and other areas will have a task, a big task on our shoulders. And as promoters of our great value chain development, there is the need for more advocacy for climate change, resilience, which I believe this engagement will focus on that. And I hope that at the end of the session, we will go, all go home well equipped to, as AEAs or as officers, to lead the crusade. In fact, I think almost all the northern sector regions are gathered here. And I believe that if all the staff were here, this room cannot sustain it. So if you have found yourself here, what it means is that you are a disciple of change. And as social agents, our focus is to make an impact wherever we find ourselves. My colleague farmers, if you find yourself here, what it means is that whatever knowledge you get, don't go and raise your pillow and put it under. Make sure you do something for your colleague farmers to emulate. Last week, one of my field officers came and said, Director, you know, let's use the farmers to teach themselves. They came and asked us, so, who sees should I buy? 
They will call one of the prominent farmers, a young guy, think he was our second runner's up. Go and talk to that man. Then later in the day, the CD left called us. Ah, Delta, this year they are buying my seat. Uh, sir, uh, the farmers are teaching their colleagues because we have taught them and they are not ready to listen. So learn from the farmers themselves. So what I'm trying to say is that as a farmer, if you are gathered here and at the end of the day, you take the knowledge and then you go and sit and put it under and you don't practice. Then it would have been better. You are not one of the disciples that Jesus chose to lead the sermon. So as we are gathered here, we are the disciples of climate change and we have to equip ourselves. I don't have that capacity. I think the facilitators will do that. I'm also aware that as a young and a baby region, there will be difficulties because when I came in, I helped Doctor enumerating some of the challenges with regards to accommodation. Yeah. If you have a wound, if you have a sore, and you are hiding it, I am not sure you will get the treatment to it. And I don't think the choice of West Gunja is out of place. The weakness we will portray, developments, or uh, developers will see our weakness and will come to invest. So what I just want to say is that if you find yourself in a place that you think is not conducive, I want to stand in the truth of the gossip boss, the FC, the FCD, the regional director of Agri, to tell you that make do with that. Try to make do with that. In fact, I have a saying that when you leave your house, comfort vanishes. Anytime I come here, there are some of my meals I snap and put it on the family platform. The children will come and say, hey, Dad, you are going to take tea for supper. You are going to take tea and bread for supper. And I say yes. The only thing I always say is that oh, I had a heavy lunch. Even if I didn't have a heavy lunch, I will say I had a heavy lunch. Yes. So, if you find yourself in a room where there are mosquitoes, in fact, we have invaded their privacy. Where we are, mosquitoes were supposed to be there, and we decided to build. What we need to do is that we try to, to reduce their infestation. But what I'm just trying to say is that I am not saying that I'm comfortable with what you are going through. I'm just trying to say that let's make do with that and take the workshop serious so that at the end of the day we will benefit. I also want to say that West Georgia is a peaceful environment. You have the right to do, to go around, socialize, but everything has a limit. Everything has a limit. Uh, I can see my boy boys uh, sitting. Make sure you don't stress and go to where you are not supposed to reach. Of course, there is a need to explore. When you go home, you have history to, to tell. But make sure that you don't cross boundaries that will bring problems to us. We are aware that as a baby region, there will be challenges. As a baby uh, regional capital, there will be challenges. But we hope that in the near future, when you come, things will be, things will be like the way you have said it. Things will be changed. Uh, nobody will say amen to that. Amen. I say I don't want to be on the pulpit. I don't want to preach. I just want to welcome you to West Virginia on behalf of the Municipal Chief Executive, the Municipal Coordinating Director, the regional director who's on the way, he will join us soon. Normal on behalf.
I welcome you to this almost one week session. And I hope that at the end of the day, we have something to carry home and be proud of it. Colleague partners, you are welcome. Thank you, Director, for this inspiring welcome message and the advice, the apologies, advice, and all that you have for us. We will abide by it and learn as much as possible. Try not to go beyond our limits. And then when we leave here, we will become good officers and promoters of climate change. Now on the program, we are supposed to have a statement, a welcome opening remarks from the National Programs Coordinator of GASIP. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't join us. He joined us in Kumasi, but uh, due to other um, activities that he has to continue doing, he couldn't join us. But he has put, um, delegated me to, sp to speak on his behalf by reading his speech for him. So, on behalf of the National Programs Coordinator, Mr. Kluche Kudomo, representative of the Environment and Climate Change Unit of MOFA, the Center for no -Till, the Geological or Meteorological Agency, officers of the Extension Agents, of the district department of agriculture, smallholder farmers, friends from the media, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to have you join us on this important workshop towards building climate champions in agribusiness value chain for climate change resilience. This is organized by the Ghana Agriculture Sector Investment Program, GASIM. This workshop aims at identifying champions and building their capacity among agribusinesses, farmer-based organizations, and other partners for climate change resilience. And here we are referring to you, the ones who have been identified by your various district department of agriculture to be with us today. The champions will be going through a four-day residential training to enable them to become ambassadors who will be engaging and sensitizing stakeholders, especially farmers, on climate change and environmental sustainability within their groups, their communities, and even schools and faith-based organizations. The Ghana Agriculture Sector Investment Program, GASI, is being implemented by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture and is funded by the International Fund for Agriculture Development with a loan of 36 million and the 10 million adaptation for smallholder agriculture program grant. The adaptation for smallholder agriculture program is IFA's flagship program for challenging climate and environmental finance to smallholder farmers. The objective of GASIP is to sustainably reduce poverty in rural Ghana by increasing profitability and resilience to climate change of agribusinesses and smallholder farmers. GASIP, over the last two years, have achieved some remarkable success which need to be emphasized. First of all, GASIP has heavily invested in rural infrastructure, thus by providing access road to link farmers to market, provided solar-powered boreholes to communities for dry season vegetable production, we have also installed automatic weather stations to provide accurate and timely weather information. And we have also helped develop about 600 hectare irrigation lands for irrigation rice production. GASIP have also provided tractors, power tillers, and handheld rice harvesters to 628 selected smallholder farmer organizations. We have also supported over 150,000 smallholder farmers with production inputs, training in good agricultural practices, climate change resilience, food safety and food quality, business operational excellence, and food processing, among others. GASIP is partnering with agribusinesses to provide market access to smallholder farmers, subscribing them to receive market price information from the Ghana Commodity Exchange. 
During the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, IFAD nested a new project, the Emergency Support Rural Livelihood and Food System Exposed to COVID-19, shortly called ESRF, under GASIP. Through this ESRF, GASIP has distributed improved seeds and fertilizers to more than 20,000 smallholder farmers across the country. Among, amount of 1.85 million US dollars has also been disbursed by the Gender Ministry and World, World Food Program to the extremely vulnerable farmers, including people living with disability from nine poorest districts of the country. The current state of GASIP implementation was achieved by supporting smallholder farmers and creating shared values and opportunities within the value chains of rice, maize, soya, and, vegetable, uh, and vegetables. GASE have also invested in the capacity building and training of smallholder farmers in good agriculture practices and climate change resilient technologies. Since 2019, GASE, with the support of key stakeholders, such as the Regional Directorates of Agriculture, and their corresponding district department of agriculture have provided input support and capacity building to the program target beneficiaries, especially the smallholder farmer. This year, the consequence of the Russia-Ukraine war has limited farmers' access to many global input suppliers, especially fertilizer. This is a time that the various climate smart agriculture technologies we at GASIP have been promoting become so relevant. The technologies and management practices include the following. Appropriate land preparation with no or minimum tillage or no burning. The use of climate resilient seeds. Appropriate nutrient and fertilizer management. Appropriate planting methods, including rice spacing, row planting. Appropriate and timely weed and pest control timely harvesting of produce and good storage practices, diversified cropping, and here we are talking about rotation, intercropping, cover cropping, permanent soil cover with crop residue, live fencing and fire belt, and also the operation of group charters and no bush burning around communities. Indeed, you have another opportunity through this workshop to empower yourselves to serve as climate change champions within your respective operational areas, and also build a network of climate change champions through whom virtual and other forms of climate change capacity buildings can be channeled. I want us to welcome the Regional Director of Agriculture For our media men and women who are here, it is a known fact that even though environmental challenges and climate change impacts have been identified as a major developmental concern in Ghana, media attention and reportage on such issues has been very minimal. You are here to understand the challenges of our smallholder farmers as they talk and you also talk to them and also equip yourselves with practical solutions from our facilitators to be able to carry out deep and impactful reporting as well as advocacy around issues related to agriculture, climate change, and environmental sustainability. It is said, and I quote, if journalists are consistent in reporting on issues of the ecosystem, the issues of climate change will be reduced by 45% in the next 30 years. You are here to start this journey. And I'm sure if at the workshop, you all work with us and communicate well to our farmers, communicate on issues of climate change, weather information, I'm sure farmers will be working well and working to be able to adapt to the various climate change related impacts. Let me use this opportunity to thank our main collaborators for this intervention, the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, especially the Environment and Climate Change Unit, the Centre for No-Till Agriculture, the Ghana Meteorological Agency, and all our partnering district and regional departments of agriculture. We say Ayiko. 
my main plea to you, our main implementing partners, is to practicalize our sustainability mechanism and leverage on the trainings and input support extended to farmers in the past so that farmers are able to go into production and follow the recommended protocols. I encourage you to keenly participate in the workshop to enable you to become ambassadors and champions, even experts in your own various organization and workplace. Thank you for coming and may you enjoy the workshop. Okay, so I'll not leave the shoes of my coordinator and come back to my own shoes. Uh, we have the regional director of our Greek here, even though we have already been welcomed by the district, and also he indicated that he was speaking for him. So, but I will still give our regional director to say a few words to us, uh, apart from the welcome, to encourage us to make use of the days that you'll be spending here. So, director, if you can, uh, you have here participants from 30. 35, uh, in fact, they're supposed to be 36, 36 districts, uh, including crop officers, AEAs, and also farmers from these 36 districts. You also have 10 media houses, and also eight value chain drivers with us here. And uh, we are here, not just for anything, but to understand the mango, and also learn together as a group. And as the farming season starts, we employ whatever we are learning here to make our farming, uh, in the, especially in the northern part of Ghana, uh, a success. We did the same thing in the Kumasi last week. Uh, we had also uh, 22 districts and media houses with us. And uh, everybody, the media reportage that we have had, have shown that farmers learned a lot. Uh, and district uh, agric officers also learned a lot, and I believe that we will have a similar opportunity here. So, Director, if you can say a word to uh, your partners for me. Good morning to you all. I'm Seydou Suleiman, the Regional Director of Agriculture, Savannah Region. Uh, I think, uh, distinguished guests, uh, I think, uh, Doctor. Uh, Okay, all protocols observed. Yes. It is my pleasure to be with you uh, this morning at this very important occasion. However, I must apologize sincerely for being a little bit late. So sorry. Yes. So, uh, so grateful to be given this opportunity to talk to you on this very great occasion. Yes, I believe most of you are gathered here for this climate change exercise. In fact, I want to I want to thank the organizers for this very important uh, meeting or this workshop. Climate change has now become a very thorny issue in our lives. A lot is affecting us. But I believe there are still a lot of us who don't still uh, understand what is really happening with regards to climate change. A lot of monies are being spent here and there uh, the global partners are investing a lot, especially to be able to curb the effects of climate change. We are now seeing a lot of changes in our weather patterns. 
Today, as we sit, we are in June. I believe that a lot of farmers haven't yet started farming. In some areas, we are getting rains. Other areas, no rains at all. We are also realizing very, very hot temperatures. We are also seeing a lot of uh, heavy storms. I think we have seen in Accra, in our tellies, what is happening in Accra. These are all serious effects of climate change. This is because the rain that come, they come with heavy storms. And it is affecting us so serious. For now, we are seeing destructions. But very soon, we will see hunger. Because there will come a period when the rains will not come at all. And when that happens, where are we going to be? Because if assuming that this year the rains doesn't come at all and it can be possible, so where are we going to end? So we have realized that this meeting or this workshop is really very timely because it's going to equip us and educate us a lot on this climate change. And I want to emphasize that you have to take it very serious. I know a lot of you have come, maybe you just feel that it's just a workshop. And I want to tell you, as partners of change, you have to take this workshop very serious because you have to go back and educate the parents. I'm told we are going to be the champions of climate change. So this means that it is a very, very, very big responsibility we are going to put on to you. Because you really have to educate the farmers. This is the time farmers have to make use of their resources effectively. This is the time farmers have to change some of their adverse farming practices. Because if we don't change, assuming that the, the dry season just came, we bent all our bushes all over the places. We bent all our trees with the hope that the rains will come. And the season starts, the rain doesn't come. What will happen? It means that all the, the trees will all die. So that the ground will now be bare. We have seen what has happened in the desert areas. It didn't just happen, or oh, those areas were not just bare like we see it now. These were some of the things that came around. There was, there was droughts. And the rains didn't come for some time, then virtually all the trees were wiped off. And this has resulted in what we are seeing in some areas. Today we see people from Niger, they are always in town, begging here and there. Why? They are farmers from those areas who were seriously depending on the land to crop their crops. The whole place is dry, no water, no anything for them to live on. So what happens? They have to immigrate from their areas to come to areas that are better. Ghana, we are not left out. Anything can happen anytime, any moment. So it's good that we learn seriously what is bringing about these things so that in our own small way we can be able to change one or two things because this is the time we have to know that we don't have to 
start destroying our trees arbitrarily. We don't have to allow bushfires to burn all our trees all over the place. This is the time we have to seriously embark in on tree planting. Um, I want to also announce that there is some greening project that is going on and very soon a lot of trees will be sent out please as partners of change as AEs, as farmers please take it serious and we are not saying just go and plant the tree but make sure that it survives make sure that fire doesn't burn it because it's just not a matter of planting the tree and within the next two years the whole field is burnt out so that we are back to square one so i would like to entreat all of us to take this workshop seriously and it is not just to learn and go and lie in your rooms learn and go and spread the message so that it will really get to the farmers. Everybody will understand the concept of what is happening. Here we always believe in witchcraft. We believe in, we have certain beliefs. If the rain doesn't come, then we start attributing it to certain beliefs. We are not ready to change. We are not ready to understand certain things we do and the consequences of them. So this means that let us be very attentive in this workshop so that we we'll be able to understand that at the end of the day we we'll also be able to spread the message across so that people will understand exactly what is happening. Because things are now becoming more expensive. We realize that our farmers, or this year, we are seeing some big changes in the prices of inputs and all other farming equipments, all other farming facilities. What do we do? It means that we have to explore all means to make sure that we help our farmers so that they will be able to make effective use of the opportunities they still have. The water is not there or it's not, it's not, it's not adequate. How are we going to do so that we will be able to maximize it and be able to utilize it effectively? Fertilizers are so expensive. How are we going to manage it so that we we'll be able to derive the maximum from our efforts? How are we going to do to reduce the impact of climate change on ourselves, on our activities? Climate change doesn't only affect human beings, it equally affects animals. There are some species that are being wiped off and they are very, very important to the ecosystem. But they are being wiped out. Today you go to game. I believe that at the end of this program, some of you will find time to go and enjoy yourself at the game. When you go there today, most of the animals have gone far. Why? Because climate change is affecting their presence in certain areas. It's affecting their ecosystem. So this is very, very serious. And uh, we have to take it. So on this note, I want to welcome all of you Today is very important occasion and I want to encourage all of us 
very, to be very, very attentive and take this workshop serious. So that at the end of the day, we really come up as champions of climate change. So I thank you all for coming and I wish you a happy day. Thank you, Mr. Suleiman Asedu, the regional director of our grid. Uh, I'm told that we have North Gonja District uh, officers joining us. Uh, can we see you on your feet, North Gonja? Okay, where is your farmer? <coughs> okay, the officer is still on the way coming. Okay, so uh, without much ado, we want to go to take um, a good picture with uh, our facilitators, and then right after that, we will start listening to you. I think in the last one hour, you've been listening to what we want to achieve from this workshop. We've also listened to, as a regional director, the district director, welcome us and tell us the practical things happening on the ground. Now, after the group picture, we are going to listen to you farmers. And this is the time that we, first of all, want the media to listen to our farmers well so that we can all appreciate the challenges that we are facing. At the end of the exercise, we will be summarizing the challenges together. And then it will come to a point that the major challenges that we have, we put it together and let the facilitators tell us what can be done. In fact, there are various and several options to the issues of climate change and different solutions abound. What we'll be doing from the facilitators is to tell us some of them, and then if there are opportunity, even you as a farmer can tell us what you're doing. And then we all can live here, knowing the challenges, summarizing the challenges, and finding solutions to the challenges. So without much ado, I want to ask to rise. We will go out, have a quick group photo, and come back and continue on time. You will rise, the facilitators will take the lead, we will go outside, you will join us for us to take the group photo, and then we will return quickly to continue the program. So, um, we, they are going to, you are going to talk about the environmental and climate change challenges in your districts. So this is not the time to talk about teenage pregnancy. This is not the time to talk about what you are thinking of, which is not environmental or climate change related. In the communications to you, we indicated that as a farmer, Try to talk to your other colleagues as an officer. Try to speak with your other colleagues so that when you come here, you are going to speak on behalf of them. I think Damango director and the regional director have already shared a lot for the issues of the Damango and maybe the region. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, please, uh, the facilitators and uh, our directors, at least let's listen to the other challenges from uh, your partnering directors, or I mean your partnering districts. So as I'm saying, we will want to hear the environmental challenges alone, not any other thing. You have three minutes to talk about the challenges. As we move on, we will realize that some of the challenges may be repetitive. So when you, have, when you come and somebody has already mentioned the challenge, you have to then bring another thing that has not been said. We are doing this till we get to the point where the challenges become same, and then we can put them into 
areas and say that these are the challenges from the regions, the districts and the regions that we are working in. And then we will leave the challenges to the facilitators. So once again, uh, I'm sure Openinibua will, will guide. And uh, we also need Kingsley. The two of them will do this uh, part together. Uh, please, uh, can you check on Kingsley for me to join? Uh, the list is here. It will go according to an alphabetical order, like I, I was uh, mentioning. Uh, the, but when you come here, I want to see the officer and then the uh, farmer. If possible, we want the farmer to speak. But this should be discussed, that whatever you are talking to, you, the two of you have agreed that these are the challenges we have in our districts. I've seen in the page uh, people already asking for a certificate. And uh, it's, uh, it's fun. They are saying that because of the way we, we did the introduction, just because of the introduction, uh, he, he, we are thinking that we should get certificates. Uh, this uh, doesn't have a certificate, but when you, are, when you talk about certificate, I believe uh, when I finish school, I have not shown my, I ever shown my certificate. The certificate is yourself. If you are practicing and leading what you are having, yeah. I have never asked for the certificate of Dr. Opanyini Boa, because he's practicing whatever will be on the certificate. If you are going to be ambassadors, if you are going to be facilitators, and you are doing it well, people will ask for you. People will call you without asking for your certificate. Certificates are papers. So let's capture what we are doing here. Let's build ourselves into it. Yes, certificates, you will present it when you are going for interview. But I tell you, if you are doing, practicing what you are saying, People will call you without your certificate, will look for you without your certificate. So, Director, uh, yes, Director, uh, I give the farmers to you now so that uh, they tell you the challenges we are facing. They can't see the handwriting. This will be summarized, put in the presentation. They are just writing it there for themselves to at least capture what you are saying. Let's listen well because at the end of the session, we will summarize the challenges and we want a confirmation from you to ensure that whatever you said is captured. I see some meetings still happening. Do I need a volunteer for that? Some meetings is happening. What is happening there? I think there is a lot of Okay. Okay, so uh, the facilitators are uh, preparing. So we will take five minutes to consult. Just five minutes so that the uh, once we start, I don't want any uh, meeting again. Do we have our farmers, our officers together? Maybe this may be the, a, a nice opportunity to sit together at this stage. We are doing it in five minutes. Five minutes. Changes that we have observed in the Boku West District are 
uh, due to climate change, these days we are seeing fall army waves, which are causing a lot of destruction to crops. And we are also experiencing drought. And Mr. Edmond can also testify that because during the dry season, he was there to undergo certain activities with some of the farmers. And we are also seeing short rainfall. The rain doesn't go far as we think it used to stop somewhere in November those days. And we are also experiencing late rainfall. As I, as I speak, most farmers in Boku West have not started uh, tilling their lands or even started preparing their lands for, cultivating, for the cropping year. So these are some of the changes we have in Boku West. Okay, your name and the farmer's name? I'm Haruna Mohamed as the AE. And, uh, I'm Haruna Patient. Okay, can you give them a hand? He can. Now, uh, Borga Municipal. Okay. After Borga, Bongo will come and then Busa will continue. Borga Municipal. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good morning to us all. Your name again. I'm Michael Akaburi, and my farmer is. Yeah, but right here. Okay. Um. <coughs> um. From Boga Municipal, I think these are the few challenges we've experienced in relation to climate. Um. There are some variabilities with the climate. You are not sure when the rain will start like it used to be. You know, in this month, April, we'll have the early rains, we can start planting. These days, it's not like that. And even because of the variabilities, when it rains early, farmers are afraid to plant because you may plant and you won't have rains again to continue with what you have started. So it's a problem we are facing. The other problem is um, longer dry spells. They have been there, but this time they come, they stay longer, and as a result, we think it's helping the activities of pests in our fields. We realize that when you have fall armyworm, especially in your farms, when, it's, when there's drought, you have a lot of their activities going on. They destroy more than when there are rains. The other thing is, we have loss of flowers. When the rains are coming, they are it all comes within the space of two weeks where it almost destroys all the crops that you have. Some of the crops have to be planted late a bit, like cowpea and the rest. And during those periods, that's where you have the flowers coming in and most farms are destroyed. We think these are all going to climate change. There's a shorter season now. The starting and end period of the rains is shortened as compared to what we used to see within our areas. I think, uh, with the, like Doc said, conversations with other groups also showed, farmers showed that there are invasions of some strange pests that they think is due to the changes in the climate. They used not to see some of these things. Rains come these days with very strong winds. Uh, I think it's a, a factor that is also disturbing uh, the place. The early stoppage of the rains also affect most of the farmers, especially the female farmers who are more into granites. They cannot harvest granite even when it's uh, due. I think these are the few challenges we are able to gather as a municipality. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes, okay. Bongo, please. Bongo, can you come? Bongo. No. Yes. I believe what they've said, they have it on half of Yes, so yes. They are not going to capture everything. They can, yes. Okay. So uh, you want to receive whatever, I think you wrote it. Yes. Can you have the, the two days in Boko? Where is Boko? Can you get your sheet? Uh, and then, Boko uh, Tanga, can you have your sheet? Or write it down well. Whatever you say, write it down. Francis will pick the sheet, the point. Red is the way that we can read. So, so that we can document it well in the report. Right, so write it, whatever you say, write it well. Okay.
So, uh, Bongo. Yeah. I'm called someone I will be with my family. And I've been down here. Okay. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I think climate change, with what we have experienced in Bongo nowadays, we have a lot of soil erosion. Well, first, uh, it used not to be that, but now, if you go to any place, immediately it rains for you, we experience soil erosion, and I think it's because of the climate change. That's why we continue to, uh, to educate farmers to uh, practice minimum tillage, so we avoid those. And then, the infestation of all underwear. I think because of climate change nowadays, especially uh, maize farmers, Nowadays, we experience a lot of fall and worm infestation on their farms. So it's a major challenge to a farmers within Bongo district. And then another factor is that we experience a lot of drought in Bongo. Currently, just at this point that I call that the sense that's rain. So most of the, our farmers, I think today that they will start planting maize. And then first, it's used not to be so. But now, first, April, there are April, May, farmers will plant. But now, because of climate change, it delays. So farmers have to uh, start planting somewhere too. So it's a major challenge to farmers within Bongo district. I think that's what we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Put us out. Yes, please, a little. Uh, North, please, North can be coming. Okay, who is enough? You can go. Okay. After Busa North, we have Busa South. So please prepare. I can still see. I can still see people writing their notes. Let's listen so that we don't come and repeat what they are saying. Uh, Sandman, come here. Yeah, I'm uh, Thomas. I'm also a farmer from Busa North. Yeah. Um, at our uh, communities, we experience, we experience a lot of uh, challenges as uh, climate change concern. Uh, we have this uh, temperature rising these days. At first, or previously, we used to have our normal temperatures. But these days, uh, from March, or even February to March, you see the, 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 the temperature was so hot and then rising even up to 40 uh, degrees Celsius. And even sometimes your body will be even feeling it like they are pouring acid on you. <laughs> and then there uh, also are floods, floods all over. And then this, it will come at a time that when it carries your crops away or your uh, things away, you can't even show again. Uh, it's because of the climate change. I uh, also have uh, the drought. We used to have about nine months of our, our season, but nowadays it's somewhere four to five months, which is a big problem at our side. And then most of our rivers and the dams, they dry up uh, due to uh, those, because the rain doesn't come at the time we expect them. So these are a few challenges that we also have at Bosa North as a municipal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can we give them a hand? Can give them a hand? And uh, we call Bosa North. Bosa North. Yeah, okay, Bosa South. Okay, um, I'm Albert Enie Gibri. I'm Ayurba Stella. All right, so together with my farmer, I think uh, we, we equally face the same challenges, just as our neighboring district have spoken about. But what I want to emphasize from our district is the dead race. In fact, uh, the late rains. Late rain. Yes, please. At our district, normally they do early maize 
production at the around along the river Sicily in those days. But these days it is they don't do it no more because of the late rains. Normally around March they start swimming, but this time around nothing. And uh, it also affects the rice production in our district. Because as of last year, for instance, by now the rice is growing, but this, at this year, if you go to the valleys, you can't see any rice, even though they are plowed the whole area, but they are waiting for rains to start sowing. So it makes it, it leads to a late planting. And then the other issue that we are also facing is this time that the rains are not there. When the rains start to come, you see that it will be very heavy and very frequent. And that can lead to floods and then water logging of some fields to the extent that some farmers cannot even go into their fields again to do any activity. So it's also a challenge because Busa South is the land there, most of the areas are very clay. And so when it happens this way, it affects our production. And this also leads to the fall having worm issues that. Uh, my colleagues also spoke about. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's give them a hand. I think we so far covered Upper East. Uh, can we come to Upper West? Solar, Solar Tuna Kaba. Savannah, yes. <laughs> 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 Good morning, colleagues. Good morning. Uh, I'm Jonga John from the Department of Agriculture, Solatunakalwa District. Okay, I'm Kuma Fred Samson from Solatunakalwa District. That is my farmer. My farmer, yeah. So, I want to change the narrative. We said the farmer should come and present, not the officers. So I want to hand over to my farmer to present. Okay, okay. the challenges that is that are facing our districts are these things. In Solakalba district, in the past years, we normally experience early rain where you used to um, cultivate um, granite and then maize. But this year is totally different. The first rain we experienced was March. That was 13th March, I recorded the first rain. Then the second rain was somewhere April, which is 7th April. So since 7th April up to somewhere May, we experienced low rainfall. Those who cultivated uh, granite early, they are now wetting and then they are dying. We also have this thing like army worms, such as pests. Due to low rainfall, we have so many pests like uh, grasshoppers and then army worms. They normally eat up all the crops, especially the meats, which we use with it we plant. We also have poor, poor soil fertility due to this forestation. They cut down all the trees. You no know, area where there are a lot of trees, we have a, a fertile land. But that place, they have cut down all the trees and they use them to burn what chapel. Which makes it very difficult for us to get. So, it, so those who transport. We also have. Finish, finish, finish. Okay. We also have high sunshine. That is uh, high temperature. So because of high temperature. When you sow the crops, the temperature will be high, and then due to lack of what rain, all the crops will wilt and what die off. We also have dried up of water bodies. We do so normal put up what gardens around water areas. All of them are what dry up due to what lack of rainfall. In Stunatola Calvan District, we have a lot of challenges in our district. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Taima. Yes, you mentioned the time up, and the facilitators will, will stop him, okay. or depend on the issue. Okay, okay so we call uh, East Roger Municipal.
I will not mention the origin to be to make a mistake. He's going to be this one. He's going to is now. What? Uh, my name is Anas George, the Greek officer. And I'm Osman Alayasu, the farmer. We are here to present our challenges regarding climate change. One of them is lack of climate resi resilient inputs within the district. Lack. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's hard to get it within the district. What input? Resilience. Climate smart, resilient inputs. What type of input? That's seas. Be, be okay. very specific. Otherwise, yes, it's even here. It's captured here. Just that I didn't mention it. Yeah. Then high cost of inputs. High cost of inputs. Then also, farmers finds it difficult in adopting the climate smart methods that we give them and trainings that we give them. They see some of these things very difficult. Then general financial problems. Thank you. Okay. I'm happy to hear the feedback when it's there, the finan general financial problem. I'm happy to hear that feedback. Okay, so we go to Isman Prusi. Isman Prusi. Isman Prusi, please, uh, kindly. After Isman Prusi, we are going to Garu. Garu. After Garu, Jirapa. My name is George Bong. A farmer. Musa Safia to agri officer. Okay. These are the challenges we had from East Mampresi district. Municipal, sorry. This year, per se, we had early rains during the beginning of the season. People, the farmers planted, and along the line, there was drought. Somewhere in May to early June. And with this regard, many people have to replant. And planting twice within the same plot becomes a problem because of high cost of seed. And also, with regard to climate change, we also have dryness of our valleys, which prevents most of the dry season gardening from happening because they used to do, but currently, most of our farmers cannot do dry season gardening because the valleys are dried up and they cannot do. And last year, per se, the rain comes, and when it was around harvesting, farmers were harvesting and it was still raining. So when it rains like that, it spoils the produce. So this was what happened. Because around like that, they don't get rain, and during harvesting, rains are coming. And if the rain was no useful to farmers again. These are the challenges we have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, let's keep listening well. So that if, if they say something that you want to even investigate or hear more, you can always go to them and listen to how it's happening, what are they doing. If, uh, at the end of the day, you will give solutions, but what are they doing is important. Okay, can we have Garu? 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 Oh, if you're watching, you are the space of. <laughs> Where's my father? Okay. Well. Um, I'm Yakub Negoro from Garu, an agric extension officer. I'm Akure Moses from Garu, farmer. Great. Um, Garu. It's, it's like we don't have much different things from what Upper East people presented, but I will start with what is happening at our four levels. Um, we have most challenges when it comes to living residues on the fall. In Garu, farmers pick all stocks after the season to use as fuel wood. So it makes it expose the soil to soil erosions. Um, the other one is that we have strange diseases, both animals and plants. Um, not only fall anywhere, but 
depend this is when you come to vegetable production during the dry season. We also have sudden deaths of our animals and plants wilting due to uh, high temperatures. Um, we also have uh, a lot of flood whenever there is any heavy pour of rain in the district. And high cost of production due to hard soil cover because uh, the rain doesn't come like that. Um, due to that, most people, when it comes to the plowing service, uh, due to the hard nature of the ground, most people will charge high and at the end, the rains will not come as is expected. So it brings low productivity and low yields. Uh, this is also affecting us in the district. Um, my family too, if you have more, you can add. Yeah. I also want to add about the, the last season of our harvest. We, all, we all, all always observe uh, a, win, a wind with the rain. And it come and just destroy our crops at the last hour. That is what I have simply. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Let's give them a hand. Our media houses, uh, you will be also talking. Uh, at the end of the day, we want to hear from you what you know or have heard from your districts. So please, uh, not what has been said here. I mean, yes, you can add, but I'm sure as a media man on the ground, on radio, you have heard information, you will also be coming to talk to us. Uh, Jirapa, Jirapa, please join us. <coughs> My name is Nasa Jonas. I'm from, from Jira. Farmer. Um, I'm Adams Alhassan uh, the officer. Yeah, in Europe, uh, what we have is not quite different from what others have, but uh, we have an uh, unreliable rainfall pattern. You can't tell when it's raining, when it's not raining. So sometimes uh, during harvest, there's even rain, which uh, sometimes spoils the produce. Then uh, we have torrential rainfalls resulting in erosion as you all know last year that some roads were cut off it's just because the rainforest was too heavy and so uh, it was lost in erosion then uh, some water bodies uh, our farmers used to rely on to do dry season vegetable production sometimes dry up quickly then uh, uneven distribution of the rainfall so you can't tell, actually tell, this is the peak of the rainy season. I think that is what we have. Thank you, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Uh, can we have uh, Karaga districts coming? Karaga, after Karaga, uh, Kasina Nankana West, Kasina Nankana Municipal will follow. Oscar Nakeda, AE. Um, concerning the climate change, we too we don't have different um, problems as what our other colleagues have said. But one thing we have also observed is that due to um, the change, especially in terms of soil fertility, most of our farmers have started. Uh, uh, reducing the production of certain crops like maize in the district. Some are moving from maize to soya bean. When we ask them, they say because of the cost of uh, fertilizer, they can't afford. For that matter, they divert into the um, soya bean productions and some of the legumes. So these are the problems we are also facing over there. Another one. And the, another problem that we are facing in our district is but about this problem almost every year. Whenever it is we are about to plant rice, the rain, the rain will come heavy. So making it difficult for some of the farmers to assess their farms. So mostly every year we are facing this problem. And okay, thank you. Let's give them a hand. Uh, what I'm observing here is uh, just with 10 districts, everybody is already saying that uh, the, the challenges are all the same. Uh, so for that reason, in the subsequent officers that we'll be having, 
you pick one of them and explain how it happens in your district like they did because uh, it looks like almost the challenges with the territories we have but uh, I think there are still more that I need to, I want to see or I expect to see so don't shy away and come and say that the, the challenges are the same from what people have already said Kasina Nankana West please uh, join us At Kassib, when we see women, we are happy because uh, one of our targets to have like a meeting like this, have 50% of them women and then 50% men, which we couldn't achieve for this particular workshop. Okay. I'm Bana Koyan Faustina from Kassana Nankanawes, a farmer. And I'm Georgina Sabari, an AEA for Kassana Nankanawes. As earlier on said by my colleagues, um, with the excessive wind, what we are experiencing in the Kasana and Kanawes is uh, when it is in the peak, let me say from August, we uh, produce a lot of sogo. And this excessive wind will come and all our sogums. You see them lying on the floor. At the point, they are not yet matured. Some by then have not even started uh, seeding. You see them on the floor. Then we also have this strange uh, insect. I don't know whether I call it pest or insect, but it affects a lot of cowpea. At the time that the cowpea is about um, maturing, it comes in to suck the juice from it, the seed juice. Yes, it's a, a very big challenge. Then, in Kassan and Kana West, most of the farmers have their livelihood on dry season gardening. And with these um, rivers being dried at the earlier stage, give it a big and a negative impact. Because especially my women farmers, they do dry season gardening a lot, and that is what they are relying on to support their families. I give it to my farmer to add if there's any other thing. Yes, due to the change of rainfall pattern, when we normally expect the rain, it will not come. It will rather come heavily at the point of harvesting to, do, to decay uh, the, the crops that are ready for drying. That is what I also have to add. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's, let's, let's give it to them. Let's give it to them. I'm happy that the, the farmer, the officer, all can express their challenges well enough for us to, 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 to see. Kasina Nankana Municipal, please uh, join us. <clears throat> After Kasina Nankana, we go to Kumbungu, Lambuse, Mampugu. I'm Kawa Jacob from Kasana Kana Municipal. Hey. Um, I'm Tawase Felis, a farmer. Never go, Kasana Kana Municipal. In regards to the challenges uh, we are facing uh, in our municipality, um, they are just the same as the other districts. But um, I would like to deviate more. Uh, we have issues with uh, nutrients leaching, inappropriate methods of fertilizer uh, application, which uh, contribute to um, climate change. Example, for example, using nitrogen fertilizers uh, without uh, using the recommended method of applications, and which nitrogen has a carbon potential um, of 21% to cause uh, climate hazards. And then uh, heavy fog in the month of December to February, which uh, creates uh, an improved room for fungal disease uh, infestations. They will have uh, pest and disease. For example, um, diseases of tomato, which is Rastonia, Fusarium wilt, and then nematode infections, has impeded the cultivation of uh, tomato in our municipality. And then the government to um, lose a lot of what income uh, because government in the past years uh, gives security service to export 
uh, base Kumasi Queens to Burkina to go and buy tomato. And then overgrazing by uh, Flanny Headman animals is also a serious challenge in Kasna Nakana Municipal. So for now, this is what I think uh, we are facing as challenges. Um, but let me add up, and then um, cutting down of trees and then using them for um, charcoal burning. Uh, it's also a challenge in Kasna Nakana Municipal because we all know that the trees that we have has um, accommodated or built up some kind of um, CO2 in them. Once you cut them and you burn them, the definitely the CO2 we have to release, and then it, it, it also causes uh, this to uh, climate change. Thank you very much. And I also want to add something that what he said. And when you look practical, when we the farmers are farmer of produce, you see that we can't get market good market in uh, our minister. So it's very, very bad. So that the middlemen will come and buy, the middlemen will come and buy and go and sell to the other people. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can Kumungu join us? Please let's be writing the notes and write uh, our district on top. It will be collected by the, the team for reporting fee. So write your, the district on top and the challenges that as you are explaining here. Okay. Good morning. I'm Abdul Karim Yaku, uh, the agric officer from Kumu. I'm Baba Yaku, uh, farm. former farm, uh, farmer. Okay. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Please, introduce yourself again. Uh, uh, farmer. Yeah, farmer. Uh, farmer. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, some of the environmental and climate change challenges that we face in Kumbungu. They include bushfires, then indiscriminate felling of trees, erratic rainfall pattern, and flooding, especially along the white volta. Um, and then also we have indiscriminate grazing by uh, cattle herdsmen uh, on the fields, which leads to compaction of our fields. So making um, zero tillage or minimum tillage very difficult to practice. And then also we have indiscriminate sun winning without reclamation. And this one, uh, particularly with the construction of roofs within the area, when they do the sun winning, they fail to uh, raise plant trees along the areas that they have done the felling or the sun winning. These are some few serious challenges that we face in the district. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, do you have something to add? No, I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can we go to Lambuse? After Lambuse, we have uh, Mamkuru. Mamkuru, we have Nyong, Nandong, 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 South. So, Lambuse. Morning. This land is some of the environmental challenges. I'm Emilio Timothy. I'm Wilfred Dapla. Yeah, some of the environmental challenges the land is facing is that some as you know, because of construction, farming uh, uh, constructed depends on sand to build their houses. Most of the time, they, they go to the riverside and destroy all their right families, farms. So it's a big challenge. Another one is uh, improper use of agrochemicals. Farming depends so much on agrochemicals. They have been using all the time to control their weeds. Say that it creates a uh, problem in the water bodies pollute the water bodies, which is not uh, useful for our animals. And uh, we also have a problem of this uh, flooding happening. In fact, it has been, it, it has been a threat on farmers. Most of the time, they destroy uh, the farms, produce for the crops, 
and is a threat to the district. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity given to me. I think uh, most people are aware about ways to sell us. We are best people in dealing of this charcoal. And so mostly when we talk about, about it, those people who rely on it, it's always difficult for us to, uh, uh, it is also another challenge, challenge for us. Thank you. Okay, that is all. Okay. Thank you very much. So we have uh, Mam Prugu Mokdori. Mam Prugu. They will be followed by Mion. Uh, thank you. Good morning once again. <coughs> I'm Ibrahim Lukman, Mamprogum Magdori District. And my father is here, PM Osman. Uh, climate change has brought us a lot of issues in the district, uh, which lead us to uh, long-term droughts. Also high infestation of insects. And then uh, also we are experiencing uh, post-harvest losses during uh, Harvest and during the uh, listen, post harvest losses uh, during the uh, late. Oh, we are experiencing post harvest losses because of late uh, rains in the harvesting time. That's what we have been experiencing, and that leads us to uh, uh, low uh, low exportation because of the aflatoxin infestation of the crops. Then I think that's the concern that we have. Several pests. Which pest can you discuss? Um, that is a, a, a fall armyworm okay. infestation, high infestation because of the drought in other things. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, thank you uh, Mam Prugu. Mion, please, uh, can you join us, Mion? After Mion Nando, Nanto, Nanumba South. And it says it's as a result of climate change. And we have heavy winds during the rains. Now, if it's raining, we are scared. Because anything can happen. So these are the challenges we have. And we have indiscriminate overgrazing of animals. So these are some of the challenges we have in our district. If our farmer, my farmer is not having something small to see. Uh, as you talk about the, uh, the animals, you see, at times, even three years now, some districts will send the acatas to our side. Because of climate change, there is no water from that side. They, so they, they came to our side for, for feeding. That is a problem too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, spoken for one hour. And uh, it's not good that we sit down for long. Can we stand up? Yes, uh, well, You see, so here, a farmer. Yes, a lot of challenges. Uh, you come to see that in Northeast Gonja district, we had the chance to practice conservation agriculture with two communities, which they adopted very well. And we think of extending it to other communities in the district. By resources is a very big challenge. Uh, that is one. Two, the rainfall pattern. You come to see that in the district, Northeast Bunga is of a valley in nature. We have rice production more in the area. And certain communities are there. Unless they plant any, otherwise flooding or uh, water logging, they can't plant. And I thought it was this year, I told them to do the planting very early 
so they can harvest by July when they, they, there is uh, this uh, drought around that time they can use the opportunity to harvest but that is not the case they did the early planting and now their mills are tasseling and there is shortage of rain so it's a very big issue for us in the district uh, strange best when it comes to rice production in fact it's a very big problem for the district last year a large number of acres of rice farms have been invaded by syringe bears. Syringe bears. Syringe bears, yes. I think I remember. Syringe bears. We didn't know where they were coming from. Suddenly, a lot of problems for farmers. I even reported as a crops officer, I reported to region office that they need to look at it. Uh, the last point is... Uh, can the cattle issue? As I said we have practiced CA, our farmers have prepared their food very well. A lot of plant residues on their fields. Rather, that was the, the, the place that even invited the cattle. Because they, they, they left the residue, they were feeding and feeding them. And so, if they don't even uh, till the land this year, they can't do. Because that was the person the cattle think they could be feeding. Causing compaction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I know people want to sit down. Saboba District, please uh, join us. But uh, yes, we can sit down. But we will rise again. Tomorrow we are going to stand from morning to afternoon. In the field. Because we are not going to sit in the field, as you know. Good morning. I am Al Hassan Abdul Muji, a crop, uh, crop officer from Saboba. The campus man is my name, I'm a farmer. Yeah, my colleagues have uh, mentioned nearly the same problems that we had, but uh, we have this few. Farmers at uh, Saboba do early planting of nary and due to the climate change it has affected the production. You see it fruits very well but they will open it and it won't bear any seeds. Another problem is uh, uneven and fluctuating of our rainfalls. Even and flat yes, you see two communities having rain, and the next one there won't be rain. So they will ask you, um, Can we do something? And you, you can't be in the known to advise them because just a few kilometers away there is moisture, and the next there is, there is not. I think these are the few problems that. Climate change has brought to our district. Thank you. Thank you. For those who are unaware, he's referring to the uneven distribution. So you have one community having rain, and uh, Savuluku, please, where are you? And the other community not having uh, rain. Uh, the GMET will talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I have heard that if you consult the boss. <laughs> Let, let, let me, let me. Yeah, if you have listened carefully to what is happening, people come up here and they tell you all the problems have been said already, but just one or two. And we don't see one or two, it's just recounting, recounting. I mean, if the problem has been said and there is the same problem but a different dimension to the problem, fine. But if there are problems that have been listed, Previously, several people, you come and stand and say all the problems have been said, but just one, and then you go back and, and talk about all those. Uh, that is not what we are looking at. Emphasize on the specific problems. Those that have been said, it, it, you have it, but is it a different dimension to that? You see, people are talking about compaction, and if you listen carefully, what is happening? The compaction is coming from this, is coming from this. In that case, then we know exactly what is happening so we can address that. It can be compaction at community A, community B. But what is bringing about the compaction is different. Those are some of the things we expect to know. 
Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Uh, no. Don't tell people are sitting there, you are missing. They are not something. They are not something. Please correct it, they are not something for them. Please, it's not something, not something. Nanton are their own, they are on the boat. My name is Adam Akono Abdurazak. He is a very good municipality. Thank you. Oh, I'm, I'm the Adam. Uh, municipality, we are also having issues with regard to climate change. And these are as follows. Our major problem around our area is bush fires. Most of our people are doing CA, that is conservation agriculture. But because of the bush burning, it's a problem to our farmers in our area. Another one is erratic rainfall. As it stands now, our area, we don't have rains to even plant. It's a major problem to us. We have another one, deforestation. Our people are doing a lot of cutting down trees without replacing in the name of chapel is a major problem. And also high temperatures, as we speak, is very hot in our area due to lack of rains. I think these are our major problems that we have. Thank you so much. Thank you, Savalugu, not now <laughs> Okay, can we have a Salah is municipal. Please join us. Then the Sara West will continue. Saturday. And then Tifari will continue. I'm Zakaria Abdul Basi. Sala is officer. Agriculture. Agriculture. I'm it. I'm the person of Kojo Mariam. Sala is farmer. As the doctor has been said, the doctor has said that we should emphasize on one, the problems cut across all the district. How concentrate on heavy rainfall with a shorter period. And the heavy rainfall affects our farmers. You know, Sisala is a major producer of maize. And with maize, the heavy rainfall leads to lodging of maize. And with lodging, you lose quality post harvest and with post harvest quality as we are one of our major target we get, if you get quality you get money and with money you are able to go you pay your children's school fees you pay you marry you do other other things <laughs> we are talking we are targeting we are ta we talk of quality and yield the first one is yield with maize, if you get correct yield, you are able to go. You get money. You and with money, you marry. You marry. <laughs> and with money, you build. When you build, you get everything you want. So that's. Uh, <laughs> I would also like to emphasize on bushfires. I would like to. This goes mostly to we women. Like after harvesting. We we'll still claim there is still maize on the land. So we, we set fire to burn and we we'll take the one one maize that will be lying down. You know, after harvesting, like there is still one, there is still maize on the land. Most of the women go set fire to pick up the maize that the left is left on the land. So. The, this fire will burn, it will burn to far, far, far places. You know fire, it can burn. Uh -huh. So this cause, uh, yes, for us to practice a good farming method, you know, if you harvest, you have to put down the, the, the stock so that they will lie down, so that it will rot down. So if you burn it like that, 
the, the land will not get. For, for the last year, I've been investigating the, the causes of peat fire and this is new. Please, uh, okay, we, we have a present for you. Uh, what's the name, Maria? What's your name? You see me for an award, okay? Yes. yes. Well, this woman has given us a very good indicator. And all of us sitting here, one thing we have to understand is that a man in red will never be willing to conserve the green. For sure. A man in red will never ever be willing to conserve the green. What, why are they burning? This is what she has said. So what is it that we can do to ensure that at harvest we are able to pick everything? So that there wouldn't be any incentive of burning to retrieve the lost corpse. Woman, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, can we have Cicela uh, West? Uh, I'll make sure that uh, in our next workshop we uh, afford to have a lot of women. As you can see from today, the women have brought new dimensions to things. And it's the same thing that happened in the uh, Kawe, Masi, when we came for. The women brought new things that most, most of the things that we are writing here, for a lot of you, are not new. But in all from Kumasi and here, the women are bringing, at least for me, new things that uh, I'm only getting to know here. So let's ensure that whenever there's an opportunity like this, let's not ignore the women. Yes, they will bring their children, they will disturb us, but it's all part of the process. My name is Kenneth Kamwenye, Sister Alawis, and he. I'm Foka Ali Imran, Sister Alawis, as a family. Uh, I think our sister district, Sister Alawis Municipal, have uh, mentioned most of our points. The bush burning, as our mother said, is just the same thing. <laughs> and uh, we have erosion too as a challenge at our place due to the erosion, soil erosion. The way the tractor operators plow, you advise them to plow it well, but still, they will complain of their bearings and do it anyhow. So it's a challenge. Last year, it was only our gossip demo field that was spared when it starts to erosion because we need the zero tillage. Issue of foul armyworm is a challenge there. And then the striker. In fact, the white man has gotten a good scientific name for us as which we is a, it is a witch in our area. You plant your maize and you go and the tail is there. You can't control it. No chemical can control it. And we have uh, overgrazing too as a challenge by animals. They do a lot of grazing there. Sometimes you can plant your maize, do the best practices. You go to the fold, you even feel like sleeping at the farm. But the next two days you can go and termites have started their work. So termites infestation at our place is the problem. So these are some of the few things. Not only the striker, there's one, another grass which me I don't know the name in English, but we call it in our language uh, Jambukumi. Yeah, it's another crops, uh, this grass, that describes a lot. Uh, so, Kamalina? Uh, Kamalina. And the most, this thing we are facing to is the post harvesting. In we, the Sala West, we face, we make, uh, our major problem is the post harvesting. Because it makes our production very low. You see the thing, they will do all right, but at the end, the post harvesting will make everything. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah.
Uh, can we have uh, Tatale Sanguli? Uh, facilitators, they mention one thing that there's a witch weed. Please come. Which, which they don't have any chemical to it. And I want us to take a, a careful uh, uh, I mean, way to help them work on that. Well, I'm sure they are always, uh, there's a way to manage a striker yeah, a way to manage and uh, let's, let's uh, stress on it when we come to we'll that point. We'll talk about that, but people are not doing anything at all. We can't control strikers. We don't need them. All right. I'm in Tenyanoa. I'm in Tabin de Thompson from Tata Sangri District. Uh, in Tata Sangri District, the environmental challenges that we have due to climate change. One is uh, decline in cl uh, organic matter. Decline in organic matter due to when we place in our district is destruction of vegetative cover that is due to illegal logging. And we are along border, uh, border town. And we have uh, mountains around there, which have a lot of forests around there. But you see people are sneaking inside the forest, cutting trees, woodlots, the river of woodlots, which is a major problem to, uh, for us. And then the last one is in even uh, even distribution of rainfall, which our colleagues says uh, this we have already mentioned. So I think these are the major problems we have uh, we face in our district. And I mean, if my farmer has something to add, yeah, add to that we have uh, wind storming. Wind storm. That is where we have a problem. Wind storm. Wind storm. Yeah. yeah. It's affecting us in farming. Well, one is just rain, or one is about rain. In fact, it comes with a heavy rain, who comes to destroy our uh, structures and therefore cause a financial loss to us. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have uh, Timpani. After Timpani, we have uh, Tolon Wahis Wami Nisipa Wawe. Tolon, please uh, come. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much. I'm former Justice Parliament, MIS for Tutani Department of Agric. I'm Leti Elijah, a farmer from Tempani. Yes, yeah, so um, one of our major problems is also wind storm. In fact, we have spoken all, but I still have to talk about this because it was aired on Tuesday, 12 April 2022, wind storm in Tempani. It's a very critical issue we are battling with. And this is as a result of uh, deforestation or no trees. In fact, our district, our district is one of the dry districts or low, uh, have a low plantation. And so it's a very big issue. That is why I am talking about it. Thank you. I'll give it to my farmer. Thank you to this opportunity. What we also experience in the panic history is also farming with farm. The insects that is worrying our people because uh, our area we invest in dry season farming, especially when it comes to onions and pepper and okra aspect. But the farming will fund is only warn us. We consulted our officers, so they give us the drugs like biopsy. We spray still, we don't get the solution. But we don't, what we have I'm experienced today is that it's the climate change that caused that disease to our crops. Not the drug alone, but this is what I have experienced today. Thank you. Quickly, to, uh, I think TV3 had the uh, windstorm to not talk about in my district. Thank you. No, no, just before you go, you're talking about insect on pepper. Yeah. Is it on the fruit or the leaf on the stem? Is it on the fruit? If you can see, so we have he has some, a, video we have a video here. Yeah, because you see. Yes, yeah, so the challenge is mm -hmm. 
It's sort of the insects suck the substrate of the, uh, the crop. Mm -hmm. Yes, not the crop. It will, even, it will even fruit. And also abort the flowers of the crop mm -hmm. or the pepper, the vegetables. Time is coming. You see them too. Yeah, so this is what we are talking about. So, uh, yeah, Doc, yeah, excuse that is me. Good. Excuse me. So, uh, I think we sprayed Bible and it didn't work. I added him Novak BT and it didn't work. And these are the videos he has in his phone. It Thank you. It did not work much. because if you are going to spray Bible, fast detergents, Novak BT, they are the same. On mice, it will not work. <coughs> now you need to know what is that. That is why I wanted to know whether it was from the food, from the. This is not a BT problem. This is not Bible problem. This is not Novak BT problem. This is a different problem. We need to apply something different. Not, not, not Okay, thank you. Uh, can we have Talon? Talon? Okay, I'll read this through. This was uh, Timpani. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. And thanks for the opportunity. My name is Dennis Baoniku. Officer. My name is Abdullah. They mentioned almost everything, but we are going to give emphasis on one of them or two. Drying up of water bodies or dams is one of the issues that we are also facing. Because we live closer or we are closer to the metropolis, vegetables and other crops during dry season helps the, the metropolis. And most of our farmers try practicing dry season garden, but by November, December, our water bodies are dried up. It is a challenge in our district. Do you have something? No. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, uh, Shall we go to Wa East? Uh, after Wa East, we will have uh, Wa Municipal and then Wa West.
Can you tell me that has been my name? Department of Agriculture, Wild West, District Assessment Officer. Challenges encountered. Surface mining is one of our challenges. Indiscriminate disposal of plastic waste or materials. Uh, we have inadequate knowledge of uh, diversification of crops. That's crop rotation. Uh, we can also talk about uh, insufficient uh, climate smart champions to sensitize farmers on uh, the negative impacts of uh, climate change. I think this is our challenges we are encountering. Do you have something to add? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, out there, you got everything. Uh, can we have West Gonja? West Gonja, we are home, right? Or we are getting closer? <laughs> we are getting closer. Okay. Ah. Okay. Oh, we are home. Mm. <laughs> Yo, Okuro. <laughs> Agamba George is my name, an officer. And with me here, my beautiful mother, Madam Mary Women, a fan. I believe all what they have said, we are also part of it. We have nothing to say. The only thing we have to say is just talk. <laughs> what we're going to do as we know is the baby. We took no water. That is the baby. No water. No water. Rainfall has been a very challenge to us, which is causing a lot of. And we have early rainfalls for the past two years and late rainfalls. Due to that, our crops are not very, very well. As you can see here, we have a lot of shad trees. I don't know whether it's a, is it a nutritional losses of what? We have low yield of what? Shad trees. We have also detected another strange thing, which is the introduction of new wheat, which is known as condemned wheat. Condemned wheat. That is what the farmers call it. Condemned wheat. It's a new species of wheat. Difficult to control. Is it grass or broadleaf? It's a broadleaf. Does it crop? No, it doesn't crop. It stands up. It stands up. And it is spread through a wind and then if it uh, it can get sticks to your blood and then you can move with it. Then we also realize another thing due to the climate change. That is rodents feeding on, uh, let me just say, feeding on tree plants. On tree plants. Yes. E.g. the squirrel. When you plant cashews, Cashew nuts straight directly to the farm. They will come and be taking them up and be eating. That is a new thing we have found due to the climate change in West Africa. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, allow, allow. My challenge is the market. Okay. And then uh, this thing, fertilizer buy. It's hard for us. Marketing and uh, fertilizer buy. What, what about fertilizer buy? You can't they, buy or it's They will buy the impulse yeah, before I'll get to buy the fertilizer. No, to say it again. Lack of market. Lack of uh, marketing. They, they are not buying. When you farm and finish, they won't buy the things. Yes, that is the marketing. Mm -hmm. What about the fertilizer? The fertilizer too is cost. Oh, okay, high cost of input. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, can we have Westman Pussy? Westman Pussy. Uh, after Westman Pussy, we do ENT and start to go and we'll be done with the district. Yeah, I'm Simon Bauer, an officer. I'm Yakubu Adam, a farmer. Yeah, actually, all have been said, but we have only two points to make here. Uh, commercial farming, 
is commercial farming, commercial. You know, normally people come to the chiefs and landowners to ask for a vast land to farm. And they use heavy equipment, bulldozers and other things, to clear the place without even leaving a natural tree over there, which is another problem. Secondly, by law enforcement is another problem. People go around doing hunting. This helps men moving from one place to another, indiscriminately cutting of trees. If bylaws are being implemented, all these things will be reduced, which the climate change problem also will reduce. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Can we also have uh, Yendi, after Yendi Zabzugu, and I'm told that I missed one district which I'll call. So Yendi, please take over. My name is Shamuna Ali, officer. I'm Mohamed Bowser, the farmer. In the end, we are stressing more on the, on the rainfall pattern. We have irregular rainfall pattern in the end. And then this year, we have early rainfall, so most of our farmers were able to plow and then plant. But getting to April, May, we have zero drought. And the issue of the fall, I mean, when sets in, we have serious infestation. And then because of the drought, most of the farmers could not control the pests in their force. As of now, most of the farmers are still waiting for rains to plow. Long drought experience. Four, increase in demand of fertilizer. And then five, inadequate rainfalls in the district. Inadequate. Inadequate rainfalls in the district. Thank you. Thank you very much. What we have done, please be considered. We have done in the last almost two hours is to pick all the challenges from 36 districts. This is basically the challenges of Northern Ghana. As you have not Northern region, but Northern Ghana. If a challenge is not mentioned here, it might not be a major challenge. Or we might, we might have not done our work well. If 36 districts uh, communicated. What we are going to do now is we have 10 media houses here. We want to also listen to them. They are not going to repeat what they have done here. But I know they have opportunity of talking to uh, farmers. They have the opportunity of talking to agri officers. From the media point of view, what are the challenges that they know at their district. So I'll call the, the various media houses to also help us to know the challenges. But before we do that, I want to ask you rise again and do a small exercise for at that stage when you go to any program, we want the participants to remember the name well. The name is Gassi. And one way to remember the name is not just keep it in the mind or your mind, but keep the name Gassi in your waist. <laughs> so we are going to spell the word Gassi with our waist. I believe all, we all know the spelling of Gassi. G A S I P. So I want us to start first of all with the G. To spell G with our waist. I want to see how we do it. How do we spell G with our waist? Please, let me say it well. If you don't do it well, you come here and teach us how to do it. G with our waist. I'm looking at you. They are spelling G, the capital G. Capital G. Okay, can I see? Okay, let's do the A. A goes like this, and then a slash. So let's do it. A. Okay. I think S is easier. It goes like this, and like this. Can we do the S well? Can we do the S well? If you are not doing well, I'm going to call you. And then. Uh, the simplest part of the spelling is the investment, that is I. And you do the I. This is the capital, 
capital I. Uh, it's not what I. So if you don't do it, well, don't do it like what I. If the capital I is like this, with a slash at the top like that. So let's do it well. And then you have to do the slash at the top. Okay, now how do we do the key? You have to do the slash first and then do the semicircle. So people are spelling different kind of words. They were discussing. Okay, we are going to do it again later, not right now. And uh, if you haven't learned it, the word is G Ghana Agriculture Sector Investment Program. Learn it tomorrow. I will call some few people to come and do it for us to look at it well. <laughs> so that when you go, not have to do it. <laughs> See, if you don't take it well, you come and spell some to do it with your face. <laughs> okay, please let's sit down. So I want to call. The registration. The registration. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Santa please, uh, can we have the registration? How many of us have been registered for today? Can we see by hand if you have been registered? Anybody with the registration form? The general one and then the hotel one, the accommodation one. Uh, is it with somebody? Somebody has it. Is anybody having a registration form? Please check the sheet that you are holding. Is anyone of you holding a registration form? At least that you have it from the registration form. Yes. Okay, so some people have not registered. Let, let's see by hand so that they bring it to you. Please uh, look at them. They haven't registered. Okay. So we have uh, three minutes again. Uh, for GBC Bogatanga to summarize for us, apart from what has been said by the farmers here, is there anything that they want to add? You mention your name and then uh, the, uh, what you have for us. My name is Emmanuel Akechi, regional correspondent, Upper East Region. I'm a farmer myself. I started farming at the age of 10 with my father as a subsistence farmer. I'm brought up. <laughs> Child labor is in context. Child labor is in context. Mm -hmm. It is the amount of work you make the child go through. If I make a pincher, my child should know it. But sparingly, as he grow the age, then he goes accordingly. So it's not sometimes when you look at it. But then the truth is, I've gained a lot of knowledge about farming. And when I started my schooling, I did agree because agree was my best. When we started, the theory was the problem. By any time we were moving to the field, I was on top. Because what the, uh, the agric teacher was teaching us, for instance, leguminous plants, nitrogen fixation, you know them. All those things, they were at my fingertips. But then I cannot go into that. The lady that mentioned that they normally burn the bush so that they harvest the remaining maize. That is in the Sisala district. When you go to the Bulsa area, you see, it's, it is attitude now. All the challenges we are mentioning here is not going to get better until we change our attitude. And we must be brutally frank again. Our elite is not helping us. The use of fertilizer, these are our lands in 10 to 20 years coming. We can't crop. I did irrigation farming. Which are the fertilizers? Almost all chemical fertilizer. Organic or Organic, I say all ke uh, 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 chemical fertilizer. Organic are uh, what we inherited from our parents. And we know all organic fertilizer, how it encourages the symbiotic relationship with the ecosystem. If your land is not put on chemical fertilizer today, and you watch when you grow crops, and watch what we've been putting chemical fertilizer for the past 10 years, it's a problem. There are facts. 
we need to face. Our elite, they know. But because somebody wants to enrich his packet by importing fertilizer, and we are literally shooting ourselves in the leg, it won't get us anywhere. It's a fact. Now, in the European countries, they are looking for what? Organic fruits. Yet, they do commercial farming and exports. Another thing is the way we, call it, we, we do the plowing. The whole northern sector, none of our crops is deep root crops. But each year, you take a tractor, and the tractor will sink the plow, not less than six to seven inch deep down. None of our crops need that to try. Over the years, the layer of organic matter that has been put on the farmlands is between four to six or five inch with organic matter. So each time you plow it with tractor, you turn that down and bring the improvised soil. Now you go for chemical fertilizer. So I will all that challenges I've been mentioned is subsumed into human attitude. And we need to be real. There are still lands in our area. They don't use tractor. When the rains fall, they use blocks. All our crops, their roots, doesn't go more than three. I haven't seen. Take it. The Nara, the early millet, which we call hunger breaker. That was what used to save the northerners. You sow it in May, June, July, you are harvesting. Now, weaver beds, that is the yellowish bed with the black neck. That one has come on board. Now, you do it, they will come around and trash it down. There is a research going on to get the Bristol Nara, the one that has got hair. And they are of two types. We have the short hair and the longer hair. The beds cannot peck the longer heads. So that is what research is coming out to help us. Without the hunger breaker, a lot of people in the Upper East, they starve. Okay. So these are the things yeah. I think I can summarize. Shall there's a lot to talk about. We can't yes. go inside. Yes, there's a lot to talk about. He summarized everything as our attitude. Attitude of farmers, attitude of uh, officers, attitude of not just uh, the elite, but also the media men. I think so let's... I mentioned Bunza. Bunza what is the big lizard. If you are not a native, the land is rich. You can farm, papa. But if you are not a native, and you don't have enough money to pick the native to take care. If you go and do it, they will pick a lizard. Yeah. The type for harvesting. They will stand somewhere, tie cotton around the lizard's waist. <laughs> like, as the lizard ran through your farm, that is how they light it. So it's yeah. attitude now. Yes. What the lady said here, the same thing, but in a different farm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. He's going to be here the whole, the whole period, among other people who. Hello. We are going to have other personnel like this with different opinions, different ideas, and we are here to talk together. And that is why we are staying together and uh, to talk and discuss together. Uh, can we have uh, Word FM, the officer from Word FM, to also share? We've got an attitude. Uh, that is what I take as a major thing that. Let's take home. Attitude, I mentioned it is key. Attitude of officers, attitude of farmers, attitude of politicians, elite, attitude of the media men, attitude of uh, everyone, including myself. Let's work on it. Please come. Thank you. Uh, good morning, colleagues. Good morning. There's something I want to add. If not, I should ask. What is the Ministry of Agric doing to our farmers? That's my question. I don't know what. Come again. Oh, sorry, my name is Christopher. My name is Christopher. Bolga, where FM. My question is I don't know what Ministry of Agric is doing to our farmers. I think they first of all have to encourage us to use our organic fertilizer more than the fertilizer we import from Ukraine. Look at what is happening. They are telling us that the war between Ukraine and then Russia, our fertilizer prices have gone up. What happens to our organic fertilizer? So I think we the farmers should be up and doing. 
don't let us concentrate more on the imported fertilizer, but we should also do well to use our organic fertilizer too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eliza, in agriculture. And the fact is we all know what organic fertilizer can do. And uh, I believe he's not just going to say it and sit down, but we will ensure that organic fertilizer, we don't need the minister to come and tell you use organic fertilizer. You as an officer, you as a, an, a farmer here, I'm sure by the end of this workshop, you can be a champion of organic fertilizer. Okay, thank you so much. My name is Bukwachi Anadona. I work for Ganga Radio in the Jirapa Municipality, in the Upper West Region. Um, I think uh, what my police said is nothing but the truth. One thing that uh, we have observed as media men when it comes to the issue of climate change has to do with the fact that most of the farmers, sometimes when they call in, to contribute to our radio programs, talking about the GIZ, some of us are partners to the Moab Northwest and the GIZ programs. So sometimes when they call, they mostly complain about the not availability of the agreed extension officers. They don't see you number. Like some even complain that they don't know you. So this simply means that. You guys are not making yourself available to the farmers. So, and then sometimes when they complain, the response you guys also give is that yes, if they need you, they have to call you. No, that shouldn't be the case. A teacher has to move to the, the student, not the other way around. So as agri officers, we those from the media fraternity, we are appealing. Sometimes, let us try to frequently visit our farmers because they need your help. Because when they see you regularly, you will be able to educate them on the challenges and then the positive ways that we can all uh, bring on board to enable us to solve this climate change issues. One other issue to my brother from the GBC mentioned that I appreciate a lot has to do with the use of the chemicals the agrochemicals. This is one thing, especially the condemn. We have some chemicals that the farmers use nowadays to spray. Those chemicals has negative implications when it comes to climate change. So I don't know how the Ministry of Food and Agriculture is going to help resolve this issue because it is causing a whole lot of problems. It kills mostly all the nutrients in the soil. And when the nutrients in the soil are no more available, now we have to resort to the use of the fertilizers. And these two chemicals are not helping matters. So I think, basically, the, the, the last point I want to make is those villages or communities that have dams, we have realized that we, those at the north, irrigation farming is one of our major issues. But sometimes you see that those communities with the dams, we have fishermen that will, <laughs> we the dry season, instead of them to allow the water to stay for our uh, farmers to use in cultivating their vegetables, they rather uh, uh, use the, those dams to do farming. Then very soon the whole water will dry up. Then the farmers' vegetables will also die. So that means our uh, fishing activities in our communities to have to also be look at. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's Ganga FM, right? I want us to do a small exercise. Uh, AEAC for crop officers. Take your notebook and write for me. How many of your farmers do you know? How many farmers? How many farmers? The number, how many farmers is a simple question? And then when you finish, hello, this is a simple question. I want you to write a figure. How many farmers 
How many of your farmers do you know? And how many of your farmers know you? Okay. Depending on what you write, uh, I will get back to the Ganga FM whether what the farmers are saying is wrong or right. Because it's clear, our farmers are saying they don't know you. Can we have Might FM? I'll come to the question later. I mean, your answers later. Might FM, can you come? Uh, good morning. Yes, my name is Adam Hussein. Uh, I am the head of programs for Might FM and the host of Farmers Program uh, Might FM. Uh, as a host of Farmers Program, I usually interact with farmers and normally I do, uh, I mean, full visit. I normally visit farmers and then do interactions with them. Uh, the challenges most of uh, the districts have mentioned is actually a fact, but I don't have to go to that. One thing I have to emphasize here is about uh, the flooding. I remember Saburubu Kumbunga and the other districts have mentioned that uh, communities within the uh, white, I mean, white water, they always suffer a lot, especially when Burkina Faso, uh, the split of the Bagri Dam, it actually affects farmers within the Kumbungu and then Saburubu and part of uh, Wale Wale. And uh, I am appealing to relevant authorities or institutions to look at that because we have heard a lot about uh, measures to at least solve that issue. I remember the Talibu Dam issue. I am not trying to play politics, but something has not been done about that. So this is an opportunity. Uh, I am speaking or appealing to um, Gassi to also put up, I mean, add your voice to that issue because farmers are really affected by the split of the uh, Bagri Dam. And then the issue of uh, deforestation uh, within my catchment area is a serious issue. Excuse me to use the word. Whenever there's a funeral or naming ceremony, uh, you will see the village people going to cut down trees to use it for firewood. And I'm thinking it's also a serious issue which uh, we have to tackle during our I mean, farming programs. Or uh, Gassip can take it as a project to educate the people on the dangers of uh, deforestation. I don't have to speak much. Thank you for the audience. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mike FM. Can we have uh, Radford FM? Radford FM to move. After Radford, we have Zara Radio. Is there uh, YGBC here now? Okay. So Radford FM and then Zara Radio will come. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Samuel Batwami. Uh, I think I will go by this angle to say that uh, farmers have to blame ourselves. At times when we are talking about some of these things, but that Cesala is a Cesala West. You see a farmer putting up maybe 10 or 15 acres, you will not see a single tree, and you are expecting rain to come. So we lock a lot of trees in the name of farm, and that is actually worrying us. Last week, we had an argument with the forestry department where you go and cut a forest reserve for a farmer to clear all the trees and then plant trees. And I have never seen that before because you don't even know whether the trees will grow and then you go and clear all the trees that we think that it will help us. I think we have to also look on our attitude. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the brief summary. Can we have a, a ZAR radio coming? After ZAR Radio, YGBC will come, then Nandom FM will follow, and then we can have Sak Sankara and the multimedia. Thank you. 
My name is Ibrahim Malas, and I'm an agri-tech technician with Zari I think um, the few challenges I've observed is uh, some traditional beliefs. Uh, some of the farmers are saying that if they don't bend the bushes, when they are farming, there are a lot of uh, snakes that will attack them. Secondly, um, monitoring by the authorities when it comes to uh, application of the agrochemicals. If you go to the communities, uh, you will see farmers apply chemicals that they don't even know how it is done. You will go to the market centers, you will see people selling agrochemicals, and they can't even explain what their use is to the farmers, and they are selling. So I will say uh, the monitoring authorities like EPA and Ministry of Agri should step up their monitoring activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the advice of uh, monitoring by respective institutions, in, including EPA, but also the district department of uh, Agri. Can we have uh, ZA? Where do you come in? Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Uh, YGBC, YGBC, YGBC. After YGBC, Nandom, Sankara, and the uh, multimedia. Um, thanks so much. My name is Dennis Bebane, a reporter, GBC. Wow. I think my senior colleague, uh, Akete, it appears we're all on the same page because I just listed same points I was coming to talk about and when he came, he was also in the same sequence. And I think that is the same thing that is also happening in the Upper West region. I like to do a lot of rural stories, especially on agriculture. And when you go down to the communities, you realize that because of the climate change and the rainfall pattern which farmers cannot predict, they have no other alternative than to adapt certain uh, methods in order to catch up with the uh, season. For instance, the use of tractor for farming, just as my senior colleague mentioned, if the farmers they don't adapt that and then they want to use the local way which our uh, great-grandparents started with, they will not be able to catch up with the uh, season and so they are compelled to uh, adapt to that and I just don't know with the agri officers if there is something they can uh, do about that so that maybe if they can still go that way but there is other alternative that they can still use in order not to uh, western the whole uh, case. Now, um, you can also talk about the uh, bushfire. In the Upper West region, it's, 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 it's a very big issue. You look around some of the agencies that are supposed to uh, implement or enforce the laws so that people don't burn uh, bush or bushes. Now, we have some forest reserves within the region, and it's an annual ritual that every year there's bushfire there. And when you go into the forest, you realize that the uh, forest, forest, uh, forest officials, some of them are even staying within uh, the forest. Yet every year it's happening, every year. And so if people that are supposed to implement or to advocate against bushfire, their own areas are burning annually, then what then happened to the local farmer who don't know anything about the effect of bushfire that we are talking about? And so it's an area that they have to also look at. And my other brother also talked about uh, agri extension officers that farmers said they don't know you. That is the fact and the truth as well. Because I've encountered a lot with farmers and when you ask them, they tell you that, oh, their community, they don't have extension officers. And so that is very true that you have to also uh, look at. Uh, and so the application of the agrochemicals, they don't even know the use. 
if they buy the fertilizer, the other chemicals that they use for spraying and what have you, they don't even know how to apply it. And so sometimes those who even uh, farm vegetables, they can even use these chemicals to spray on the fruits. Then the next day, they block them and they send it to market to sell. And you can imagine the hazard that it can cause to human. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to call Nandom, Nandom FM, to also uh, say a word to the issues that we discussed. Well, thank you very much, and I agree. I think it's uh, 12 o'clock now, or somewhere that. I think um, the C4D, we are talking about change, of, uh, change for development, is a general problem that can across our not only farmers, but um, all the institutions and uh, programs that we are doing in this part of the world. Um, our farmers are such a way that uh, information we get from them is um, some of the, uh, let me say, something like weather. The weather forecast, they don't actually know what is happening. Uh, one of the other issues is uh, about this uh, access to um, financial aid. Some of them, uh, we did a research with uh, Osu Asset some years ago. That is Ohio State University, student with the African Center for Transformation. And it was on this drought insurance. And I don't know how many farmers actually have uh, access to this insurance um, uh, with their farms. The other issue is um, this bush burning. I remember last year, the best farmer in Nandom municipality happens to be from my uh, community. And uh, his um, rice farm got burned with the rice. That is, he harvested, left it there, and wanted to go and convey it. But um, when he realized it got, the whole thing got burned. I think this is uh, one of the issues that the farmers are raising. And I believe uh, most of the things that have been said here are what is happening. So I think what we need to do is to communicate. And one of the, uh, one of the issues is also um, the access to maybe the improved variety of seeds. They complain that they don't get them. Some too is uh, the cost of it. And then, when, just as my uh, friend from, my colleague from GBC spoke about, some of them buy the fertilizer, they don't know which one goes first. And then they have the salt one and the, the what is that, they don't know which one to apply, when to apply and how to apply. So before you realize, the whole farming season is gone and they did the misapplication. I think this is all that I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, can we have a Sankara radio? Sankara radio. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, I'm Mohammed Allah Hassan Salman, very popular known as Dr. X Ray. Uh, look at the, I've been here today. From the outside of the program, it looks like we have better the whole thing. Yeah, our focus today's edition certainly is about uh, climate change. Yeah, how we can get ready. Okay, okay. 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 Yes. okay. So, uh, looking at it, uh, I was thinking, yeah, like I said, uh, our focus uh, is on the uh, climate change. And looking at I should drop it. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. I want to, okay. So, uh, I want us to know something. Uh, this time around, just let me hold it this way. I think I'll get Okay, 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 no problem. Okay, I hope. Okay, I hope you can. You see, it's it's okay. It's okay. okay. So let's look at uh, our purpose on this the climate change. You know, nowadays we are practicing or we are adopted a, a system of a, I mean, a chemical way of farming now. So, while you're mentioning uh, climate change, uh, you talk about uh, this 
and the, the chemical use of farming. And you know, our area, these are the things that we are, we are practicing it. You know, uh, a couple of uh, years ago, we are using like this in the manual with uh, farming. But nowadays, or this summer, we are using chemical and uh, farming. And then we, are, we have to look at this, the changes in the climate. And there are so many factors. And you know it more than I do. The burn of the bushes, falling down trees without a prison. And then uh, most of my program on radio. So when call is called, and, and then uh, I give, most of the reason I give, I give uh, offices, they encourage farmers to be using chemicals. Yeah. So yeah, they encourage them to use uh, chemicals. Like if you have a, a rice farm and use chemicals, I mean to weed. You know, you end up polluting, polluting the whole thing, the water body. So I think if uh, we look at that, you can hear me. So I, what I'm saying is, most of the agri I mean, uh, offices, they encourage farmers. Okay, let me hold it for him. Okay, anyway. So some of the, are, are you getting it? Okay, so let's focus on the factors that cause uh, climate. Uh, I think it will be better. And how to, I mean, to educate the farmers to adapt another way of farming. I think it will help us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think the man is a king. He's not going to hold in the mic. Thank you very much. There's a lot to do by farmers, by officers, by the media. At the end of these three days, or four days, we will need to know and understand the role that we, either as an officer, farmer, media, the role we can play to support what they declare, then uh, you think they are failing. If they are failing, it's because we are failing. If the presidents met in Malabo and made that declaration, you know our president, not the current one, not the previous one. Maybe the previous one was farming. I don't know about the current one. Uh, uh, former president I know uh, is into farming. I don't know the current one. They cannot be the solution to what they were declaring, but they knew that you would be the solution. If they do all they can do, and you are, not do, you are not managing the small people, the small farmers that they say they, they, you don't know them or they don't know you. I'm happy on the page. I've heard that a farmer saying that he knows, uh, or is, is it an AEA saying that he knows his farmers, or a farmer saying that, uh, a farmer saying that he knows his, uh, his or her uh, AEA, which is good. I mean, the question I asked was not to say that it's not true, or it's true that we don't know our farmers. Whatever the answer is, whether it's true or not, it is still clear that some farmers are, don't know our AEs, not the people we came with. Surely not the people we came with, but there are a lot of farmers that don't know what an AEA is. There are a lot, so much farmers, and it's not your fault. Because if you are responsible for an entire community, I'm sure, surely there will be some farmers that will not know you. What you can do is ensure that at least the small place that you are. This morning I was talking to uh, Dr. Boa about uh, what farmers, what AEAs can do. The small area that you are, what impact are you doing to the little farmers, uh, limited farmers around you? What can they say about you as an AEA? If at least the people around you can have you, can see you as an impact maker. You are doing your part. You may not affect the entire district. Yes, of course, sometimes you have so many uh, area um, under you, which makes it difficult to cover. And that is why sometimes you get even gossip supporting you. I believe uh, for sure we support you to take care of a little quantity of uh, farmers. 
but they are still a lot farmers. So they're little close to you, the 20 members that GASIP support to, for you to even know how are you managing them. I met a farmer, a, a farmer group uh, when I was coming here. And they say that when they speak, the, the AEA don't, don't listen. They come and say, that come and, uh, I don't want to mention the name of the district. But they are not here, so I can let me do it. They say that when, when, the, when, the, when they mention that our crops are ready, our fields are ready to plant, the, the AEA who is in the, in the district, like a little far away, where they are, has a little deviation of uh, environmental conditions. So as a farmer or farmers who have been in an area for long and know that we have to plant on June 15th or around June 15th, when they say that the AEA who sits in the, in the um, district level says that, wait, let it be another time. How are we learning from our farmers? Or are we picking the same data from our district level and say that the rains will only come or the rains will only be in the next two weeks when the farmer knows that, yes, it's ready? We can make the impact in our small way. And the small way is important. At the end of the three days, we are going to make a pledge that in our small communities, in our small area, we are going to ensure that whatever we are learning here, Without the support of gossip, without the support of, we, we shouldn't be looking at all the time uh, uh, projects coming to, to help before you can help our farmers. If we do that, then we are behaving like the, the doctor and the patients. And I want to repeat, don't let us be like a doctor, a doctor and a, a patient. If we do that, we cannot make any impact. There are farmers there that we know their challenges. If you don't know, they have mentioned it here and we can use what we are, whatever we are mentioning here, whatever we are learning here as a basis to add up to what we know so that from here and in the coming season and the seasons ahead of us, we will make a, a different kind of impact. We will not do things the same way that we have been doing in previous years. If you do it that way, nothing will change. 2025 will come and people will still be facing uh, hunger. Uh, let me indicate that yes, we still had uh, VCDs who could have gotten opportunity to talk, but because of time, uh, we want to take it your challenges from the challenges that uh, came up uh, from the various districts. So don't say that we ignore you. We surely know that you are here, uh, but we uh, pick from the 10th district, we realized that the challenges were becoming uh, almost the same thing. That is why. At least uh, we didn't call the VCDs. We will be going for lunch uh, by one o'clock, but you'll be breaking very soon so that uh, we have the opportunity to start talking to ourselves as we move towards the, the cafeteria, the restaurant, to have our lunch. Even though we are closing earlier, we want to be here back by two o'clock so that we can have the next session after you have spoken, we want to give the opportunity for our facilitators to take us from uh, 2 to 5.